He spent a half hour filling you in on his plans to drive coast to coast. Enthusiasm radiates off him. Of course. Where's the joy in driving if you don't look the part? He slips off a glove and has you feel how soft it is. Driving really is the only way to travel. Yes. Yes! The people around here don't get it. If you're ever along the mother road, keep an eye out for me. He laughs. Oh, friend, I would love to show you, but that's for another day. She shakes her head. Factory's never going to reopen. They'll never get the money. Some people like to think of porters as some special kind of black folks. I suppose that's true. I know I don't always correct them, but we ain't special. Not really. No matter where I go in this country, I'm a black man before anything else. If that was true before I put on this uniform, then it's going to be true long after I'm buried. Have any optimistic tales? Just like I told you, friend, miles and smiles. Love. I was worried about losing. I was afraid having to pretend to be kind all the time would stop me from feeling the real deal. But I guess I'm just a bad actor. Because none of what I perform for those passengers compares to the love I have for my brothers and my people. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good happy story. You got any? Positive attitude. That's what I like to hear. When I say the future's in the hands of porters like me, I mean it. Pullman porters help not quite rich and not quite poor white folks feel fancy for a change. But now, that's making us a bunch of not quite rich and not quite poor black folks. Curious to see what comes of that. You got any stories with a bit of excitement to them? on the radio? <laughs> you told it better, though. Home is changing. Black folks used to be all down in the country. But that was no home. Now we're all moving around. Mostly up north. Wonder if that's gonna be any better. Maybe moving is all that you can hope for when you don't have a place to go. Anyway, you must have some funny stories to tell. I'll keep this story in my pocket for sure. It'll make some passenger laugh. Luck? Oh, I'm lucky. Real lucky. I feel guilty complaining like I do. With this job, I'm a hell of a lot better off than plenty of other black folks I know. I think about that, my relative fortunes, and it takes some of the sting off. Tell me something that'll make me laugh. I could use a chuckle. That's a good one. Very good. I had a moment of joy the other day when I met a porter by the name of Oscar Michelle. Brother showed me some of those moving pictures they got now. He's been working on some of his own, too. Glad to know they ain't just for white folks. Seeing yourself as just one part of a whole people can make you feel real small. 
I believe some black folks become porters to try to get above all of that. But they just end up feeling small in a different type of way. I think of all I am in all the masks I wear. Franklin, black man, Pullman porter, railroad man, union man, and how none tell the whole story. So watch me. It's freeing to know you mean more than what other folks think. So what about you, friend? Who are you, completely? Chevrolet idles outside a dusty filling station. Sure to appreciate it. And laughs and claps you on the back. You want to know something funny? I've been misguided the whole time I've been speaking with you. I was in the library in Seattle and I found Ovid's Remedia Amoris, The Cures for Love. There's a part where he specifically advises against traveling alone to overcome a heartbreak, which is exactly what I've been doing for so long. I laughed, a wild, bestial laugh. They came over and kicked me out. You never know what you'll come across when you read whatever you can. I need an optimistic story right now something to put a smile on my face. That's a good one. We do reach up like that towards hope. Everyone thinks they understand love. I thought I knew what it was too. As a poet, it was my subject, my area of expertise. But really, I had no idea. It isn't about what others do to you. It has nothing to do with that. Love either comes from you or it doesn't. And that's the end of it. Alone, out here, I spend too much time inside my own head. Can you tell me a hopeful story? I like that one. Makes me feel the way Silas used to in the old days. Faith. I used to have faith that the road would eventually take me where I wanted to be. Then I lost confidence in that and it turned out the road went nowhere. But that's led me to an important realization. Now I say, yes, that's exactly it. The road goes nowhere. It's an enlightenment I know Silas would be proud of. I need an optimistic story. Right. I like that one. Makes me feel the way Silas used to. The future, I don't know what's to come after all this, but 
At the moment, I can't bring myself to care. The whole time I wandered alone, I lived in the past and put all of my hopes in something yet to come. I need to let go of all of that. I've decided there's no such thing as the future. It's a healthier way to go about this business of living. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. The tragedy in that story, it's real. Have you ever tried writing poetry? Oh, it's like I've been sleeping this whole time. Sleeping or dead. But something's happening. Something's awakening. I have the sense that I need to start putting words down again. It doesn't even matter what the words are. I need to compose. I need to do it as if my life depended on it. It does, obviously. Do you know any stories that will make me laugh? Hey, uh, you don't need to try and cheer me up. It's been a long while since I truly felt joy. But when I look back on it now, I can see that joy was when I was telling Silas about my poems and he was saying nothing in return. Just watching his sensitive eyes and silent nods. Maybe I can find something like that again. I finally feel like it's possible. When we first met, I asked you why you were on this road, but I was the one who really didn't know why I was out here. Now I'm off again. This time, to find a place to stay a little while. Not sure where that'll be just yet. I only know I want some place where I can see the water and watch trains go by. Even at rest, I still need to be near things in motion. They say the Dharma will end, like all things, and the time of its ending has already begun. So what is there for us in this world? Why should we stick it out here? I don't have a great answer to that, but I feel better than I did before. I loved Silas. I still love him. Love him like nobody else. But everyone goes their separate ways in the end. We all have to wander. See you around. of a low-lit, smoky bar, young man is recounting a story to a woman whose dark pin curls bob with every fascinated nod of her head. He nonchalantly waves the 38 special he's holding. From the bank! He's pitched high enough. For the bartender rolls her eyes. But no one seems particularly bothered by the storyteller or his weapon. I don't think of it as stealing, just righting a wrong. The bank took Dad's money and we're going to take his land. Now he can pay him and stay where he is for as long as he wants. It happens to be with the bank's own money. Even better! The woman's curls bounce as she shakes her head. A half-hearted protest undercut by her laughter.
numerous cluster outside a dilapidated church. A heavy-set man sings a work song as he swings. The man leaning on the jackhammer nods. Hadn't heard him sing before. you for news from anywhere but here as his radio burbles. You catch a snippet. I'm robbery in progress at... He waves a hand. Yeah, it's just Willie. Every month after his paycheck goes in, he marches into the bank with his 45 and demands cash. Candace gives it to him. Right you are. No harm in it. Truth is, Billy just ain't very good at using banks. That's no crime. You get to the bank several minutes later. There's a crowd gathered round the entrance, blocking it. The stray rooster crows repeatedly. Satisfied with its vocal performance, the bird rushes you, 
flapping. It backs up and repeats the gesture. The rooster launches itself into the air, going for your eyes. As you step back, it returns to gouging your shins with its beak. Its crow now is more like a shriek. All right, all right, I'm coming. God, don't mind old Red. He's better than a guard dog, but harder to train. Red rushes at your feet. Eh, sorry. I can hold him while you get past if you like. As you step onto the man's front porch, the volume of red the tea the man gives you is too sweet, but there is an ominous clucking just as you prepare to leave. jump when they hear you. Oh, thank fuck. Thought you were our pa. We need you to take these sheep away. He points at the sheep. Revenge, mostly. The boys are grinning. Was that a joke? Pa gave Lenny. Well, you can fuck off then. As you head away from the field, you pass the porch of a farmhouse. The man stands, yawning apologies. At your words, he sits again heavily. Grackle perches on a fence post at the border of the farm. Fields have been stripped clean. A man lies on his front in the dirt, seeds spilling out from the sack he holds in one hand. You take the sack. The bird's heads turn in rhythm as six eyes assess you. More, it says. You carefully feed it, you cautiously feed it a handful of seed. The bird crows with rage. The bird gouges your arm. You bat it away. It lands by the man.
racetrack lawn is a sea of hats. Boaters, bowlers, berets, and cloches. Nearby, some gentlemen mumble to each other. That she demon petunia. She wins another race. I'm out of house and home. The horses run inches apart and kick up dust thicker than a morning fog. You depend on excited folks with binoculars to narrate the action. As the herd rounds a bend, you glimpse Petunia on the outside. She gallops with pride and determination. You hoot and holler for that fierce filly. Petunia falls behind on bends, but drives ahead in straights. She sprints around the home turn into a dead heat with a frenzied colt. The crowd stands on their toes. The finish line nears. Petunia tears past the wire. The gentleman you overheard earlier stomps on his fedora. As a judge adorns Petunia with a wisteria garland, she sniffs his pockets in search of treats.